So in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to solve a mixed circuit. Mixed meaning there's both parallel and series components in the same circuit. So I'll show you what that looks like because we're going to do an example problem. And I have a little algorithm here that we're going to follow. So step one, we're going to reduce the circuit to a simple one. It can be a simple series circuit, but you can also reduce it to a simple parallel circuit as well. Once it's a simple circuit, we can find the total resistance, total current, okay, and then everything else in that simple circuit. Okay, and we can do that using Ohm's law. Then we're going to go backwards and redraw the original circuit using Kirchhoff's laws to figure out those components. So that might sound a little bit confusing. So let's go over what this means in an example. So this is a mixed circuit. Okay, you can see we have these two resistors here are in series. Because okay, once you go through this one, you have to go through the next one. But they're in parallel with these two here. And they're all in series with this one. So this is confusing. Like, what kind of laws do you use here? Do you use Kirchhoff's um, laws for parallel circuits or series circuits? And yes, it's confusing. You need to use both of them combined. Um, but we're going to get used to doing that by first reducing this into simpler and simpler circuits. So let me show you what I mean. And this is where it really um, has meaning to call um, resistance as equivalent resistance. Because I'm going to start by taking these two resistors here and replacing them with one resistor that's equivalent to the two of them. So let me redraw this circuit. So you have a battery source. Oh, I switched the direction of positive and negative. That doesn't really matter. And instead of those two, I'm going to replace it with just one. And then, of course, we still have R5 over here. And we still have R3 and R4. Okay, so then what's the resistance of this one new resistor that I put in here? It has to be equivalent to these two. And since these two are in series with each other, we have to remember to uh, figure out equivalent resistance of resistors in series. We add their resistance. So we take 400 ohms and add that to 500 ohms and we get 900 ohms. So that's 900 ohms. This one is still, I haven't changed anything else. That's still 1800. And this is still 1200. And this one is still 600. And of course the battery is our source. That's still 200 volts. But that's still a mixed circuit. Because what do we have here? We have these three resistors in parallel and they're all in series with this one resistor. So let's simplify this even further. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw another circuit, but I'm going to replace these three resistors with one resistor that has the equivalent resistance of these three. And when I do that, we are going to get a circuit that looks like this. So that's our new resistor. We still have our 600 ohm resistor, and that's it. So we have our 600 ohm here. We have our voltage at the battery, 200 volts. And then we have some new R equivalent over here. And that's a simple series circuit, one that we can easily solve that we've done before. First, we need to figure out what that R equivalent is, though. So what resistor would I need to replace these three resistors with so that it would be the same? And in that case, you have to remember, okay, how do you add resistances in parallel? To do that, remember, we're going to do 1 over REQ equals 1 over 900 plus 1 over 1800 
plus 1 over 1200. So that's just adding fractions. So if you add those fractions, um, either in your head or on a calculator, um, you get 1 over 400. Remember, that's 1 over REQ, so we need to take the reciprocal of both sides, and that'll give us REQ is 400 ohms. Okay, so we know that this is 400 ohms now. Now all we need to do, or the next step, anyway, it's not all we need to do, it's just the next step. The next step is solving this simple circuit. It's a simple series circuit. So first we can figure out what our total is. And since it's a series circuit, the total resistance is the sum of the resistance across each resistor. So we have 400 and 600, so we get a total resistance of 1,000 ohms. And that's true in all of our circuits. That's true for this circuit. And it's true for our original circuit up above that we we're trying to solve because we replaced all the resistors with an equivalent one. So we now know what total resistance is of this original circuit. But we still need to find everything else in this circuit. So let's go back to our simple one. Here we have um, two, two knowns and one unknowns. We know voltage, we know resistance, we're looking for current. Anytime you know two pieces of information, you can solve for the third using Ohm's law. So if we use Ohm's law, which would be in this case we're solving for current, so current would be voltage divided by resistance, which is 200 divided by 1000, we get a current of 0 0.2 amps. And since this is a series circuit, the current throughout a series circuit is the same. So the current through this, this resistor is 0 0.2 amps. And the current through this, this resistor is also 0 0.2 amps. Now that we have two pieces of information for each of these resistors, we can solve for the third, which is our uh, voltage. So if we solve for the voltage, okay, we're going to use, again, Ohm's law, but rearranging for voltage. So voltage equals current times resistance. So we get 0.2 times 400, uh, which is 80. So we get 80 volts. And here we get 0.2 times 600, which is 120 volts. And you can check to make sure that works because... Uh, the sum of your voltage drops should equal the voltage gain at the battery. So we have 80 plus 120 does indeed equal 200. All right, so now that we have this simple circuit solved, we're not done. Because the question was to solve this circuit. So now we need to take the information we found in our simple circuit and work backwards back to the original circuit. So let's first work backwards to this circuit. What did we do here? Well, we took these three resistors and combined it into one. So now we're going to take this one resistor and sort of split it into three in parallel. Now, if you remember uh, Kirchhoff's laws, voltage is the same throughout a parallel circuit. So if we have 80 volts going through this one resistor, when we split it into a parallel circuit, we would have 80 volts going through each of those resistors. Okay? That's um, Kirchhoff's voltage law for parallel circuit. So we know that these must each be 80. Knowing that they're each 80, well, we can now go back and figure out what the current is through both. We're going to use our Ohm's law to solve for current. So it's voltage divided by resistance. So 80 divided by 1200 is 1 over 15. And it's best to leave it in fractions because um, you don't want to be rounding off anything, okay? Because that'll just lead to things not adding up properly in the end. So let's leave it as 1 over 15 amps. Uh, next, you have 1800 over 80. That's 2 over 45 amps. 
and then 900 over 80, that's 4 over 45 amps. And you can check that because they should all still add up to the total current, which is 0 0.2 amps. And if you try that on your calculator, you'll realize they do. 4 over 45 plus 2 over 45 plus 1 over 15 do add up to here. Now this one, nothing has changed. We never did anything to this resistor. So we still have 0 0.2 amps going through that one. And we still have 120 volts going through that one. So now we've completely solved this circuit. We're going to take this and go back to our original circuit. Now the things we haven't changed will stay the same, right? So we have a 1000 ohms at the source. So a total of 1000 ohms, we have 0.2 amps, right? That's our total current. Same with R5, we never changed R5. So it's still 120 volts. And it is still 0 0.2 amps. Now going from this one to this one, we never changed R3 or R4. So we've already solved for R3 and R4, right? This one's still going to be 80 and 2 over 45 amps. R4 is still going to be 80 volts, just like below, and 1 over 15 amps. But what we did change was we changed these two resistors in series to one equivalent. So now if we're going backwards, we're going to need to take this one equivalent and split it into two in series. So you need to ask yourself, what stays the same in a series circuit? Is it current or is it voltage? And if you remember a volt, um, Kirchhoff's current law for a series circuit, it stays the same. And remembering these rules is very, very important. Right? It's like remembering the rules for a Sudoku. If you forget the rules for Sudoku or have to constantly look them up, it's going to take you real long to solve that puzzle. Right? It's the same with mixed circuit. Remembering the rules, right? which is Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws for parallel and series circuits. And then, of course, Ohm's law. All right, so if the current's going to be the same, then we know that the current through each resistor is 4 over 45 amps. So I'm going to write 4 over 45 amps for both of them. And we can solve for the only thing missing that we still need to solve for, which is the voltage through each of them. Now, if you remember Kirchhoff's voltage law for series circuit, we know they should add to 80 volts. But since they have different resistances, they're going to be slightly different values. So we can do um, V equals IR. So multiply current times resistance. And when we do that, for R1, we get 320 over 9 volts. Keep it as a fraction. And for R2, we get 400 over 9 volts. And you can check when you add 320 over 9 plus 400 over 9, you perfectly get 80 volts. And so now you're done solving the mixed circuit.